Steve and Matt, and we're here with another episode of the Risk Control Show. Welcome aboard. Matt, what's going down? You know, I thought that we were finally heading towards a cool down, Steve, but the past few days, I think it's been hotter than we've had all summer. Do you, would you agree? It's like, it's like, it feels like it's so almost, almost 100 out here. So I had to drink so much water yesterday, it wasn't even funny. <laughs> and it's not oh. just the heat from the, the heat, it's the heat from the hurricanes, the active shooters, and all that. So, yeah, there's a lot of heat. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> hey, we're uh, we're here with this episode. We're talking a little bit about some active shooter updates to emergency plans and things like that. And just know we're your number one source for making uh, plan updates and getting all that ready to rock and roll and training your staff and doing all that kind of stuff. We're the folks that do it. So if you need help, call us. All right. North Carolina, active shooter at Chapel Hill, right, Matt? Yes, that's right. Chapel Hill, a uh, student entered. Apparently, this is a graduate student. They entered a educational building with a firearm on the campus of Chapel Hill, North Carolina. That's the, the big University of North Carolina that we're all familiar with. And basically, basically killed a professor, their graduate professor, like their counselor, they killed this the the t teacher, and then the police found the individual about ninety minutes after the shooting and arrested them. Um, I should say allegedly. This is alleged. Yeah, this, is all alleged. Yeah, this is all alleged. We're going off of the reports that we have that we are available to us in online media. However, yes, they uh, they arrested an individual they believe is a suspect for this, and and this person is a graduate student who worked with the victim in this. Okay. Yeah. And with that, I think there were a lot of media reports on uh, students that were in lockdown that were asking law enforcement for their ID. A lot of folks haven't heard of this. I know it's not rampant in a lot of areas, but it's a very good idea. Like one yeah. thing that is always challenging and especially when we go out and do our drills, we always tell the students, don't open the door for any reason whatsoever. And, you know, if they know the voice of the principal and the principal gives the all clear, or you can open your doors. OK, fine. But what if that principal is not on campus, um, can't make the all clear announcement or, for example, um, is killed in the event? Well, right. who do you trust and how do you verify? So it's always trust but verify. I think that was a famous phrase somewhere, wasn't it, man? Yeah, yeah, I had to believe so. Yeah, yeah, trust but verify. It sounds about right. Uh, so, you know, without getting into too much Hollywood craziness, um, the, the whole concept here is, yeah, you should trust and verify who you're opening the door for. And yeah. I, I always remember in Santa Monica, we had a big gang fight, um, you know, and like seven police agencies responded. The board members like, hey, Steve, go get my daughter out of this classroom. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not really excited about walking across the campus when we got gangs, you know, and and right. heated combat to get your daughter. Uh, it's a big ask. And it's it's kind of actually pretty pretty ballsy but you know what they yeah. just opened the door and yeah. brought her out and now i'm i'm on the hook for protecting her through everything that's going on and getting her to her dad i mean it's just stupid number one don't right. do stuff like that and no you're not that special that the rules don't apply to you right you're actually putting right. other people in danger so um trust but verify one of the things that they were doing is they were asking law enforcement to pass their id underneath the door um, to then make a call to 911 and verify the officer. And I right. thought that was really smart, and I, I like it, and it's something that we teach as well. Um, you know, and again, without getting too Hollywood-ish here, you know, uh, there's always the what-ifs, like, oh, uh, now you're putting yourself up against the door. Does the gunman slip an ID that 
looks like it is it is fraudulent, but is getting right. them to come to the door so he can shoot through the door. Well, yeah, that's always a possibility. But uh, also, uh, what if it is not law enforcement and um, they call the all clear and are yelling, hey, I'm going to pass this ID. Is anyone in there? And you respond to that. You know, you have that downside, too. There's no <laughs> this is reminiscent right. of of ergonomics, right? It's a can of worms with more twists and turns than a bowl of spaghetti. You know, it is just one of those things where there's no way that you can handle every single kind right. of idea, right? Our, right. Our issue that's going to pop up. And so there is no perfect solution to this. So you really have to kind of, you know, feel it out and go with the flow. But slipping IDs under the door is a important aspect in verifying who the officer should be. Um, yeah. The other way to do that is to uh, make the calls to 911 and ask who's on scene prior to IDs being slipped under the door. You know, that way you know what the officers are that are supposed to be coming. Then you could have them state their name and badge number and these types of things are, you know, even work a code with um, 911, you know, have the officer say this. Not that, again, you can get into all the Hollywood scenarios where, oh, well, what if they're listening to a police scanner? What if they're doing this? What if they're doing that? You know, right. obviously, right. there's no great way to do it. But start thinking about these things, you know, how can you verify? You know, they could uh, mm -hmm. put it up on the window. You could slip it under the door. There's a lot of different things. But, you know, uh, generally, you'll be able to somewhat distinguish between the voices and the actions and the authority that the officers command versus an active shooter. Unless, of course, they're previous military. Going, going back right. to the yeah. <laughs> you know? so I, say, I, I think that that's the thing you, you've touched on, Steve, that, that I love about this. Look, there is no perfect solution, but if we're – for 99% of the time, this is going to work. This is going to protect people. Right. You know, right. so so look, if we wait until something is 100 percent to implement it, it's never going to be implemented. Right. You know, and, and also I like to talk a little bit about your thought process of approaching that problem. I think this is something that we can use on just about any problem that we have. Look, you're going to have a set of solutions. And you have to choose and evaluate those solutions. Which one is the best one given the situation? What are the hazards of going with the solution? What are the benefits of going in? You know, how, how are you prepared? And each solution will then present hazards that then you can try to attack and say, okay, how can I combat this hazard if I go with this solution? And you follow that tree. Yeah, you know, and that way you get to a point where you're comfortable. Yes, you're never going to be 100% but you provided enough options to give yourself shielding in the vast, vast majority of circumstances. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Matt, do me a quick favor. Just uh, move your microphone in a little bit so your voice is. Am I, <laughs> am I fading? Yeah, that's, yeah, you're fading in and out, man. Uh, it's fading like me teaching, teaching Natasha how to drive. It's like, <laughs> yeah, please fade, fade. Not a hard turn. It's a fade. It's a fade. <laughs> Uh, sorry to be laughing so much during this episode. I know, it, you know, these are tragic events and, and again, our hearts and yeah. prayers and thoughts all go out to uh, North Carolina and, and, um, everyone that's involved in these things. Don't get me wrong. It's, but that being said, we, we got to yeah. come up with better solutions. And like you said, Matt, there yeah. is, you know, it, it's so important. It's so important. You got to plan, you got to plan, you got to do tabletop exercises. You got to go through the ifs, thans, the ifs, buts, and you can't be relegated to that'll never happen here or that's too far out on the edge. We see all yeah. kinds of crazy stuff. Yep. How many people have lost their lives because they had that exact same thought process and then it happened right. and they, they didn't plan and then that happened. Right. You know, yeah. people are even, even worse, strangely enough, than if you lost your own life 
but the people that you are responsible for, they lost their lives. And then you have to live with that. Right. Have you, if you just want a little touch on crazy uh, crimes that have actually happened, have you heard of Florida man? <laughs> but you mean the concept of Florida man or, or a specific incident? So no, I've, Florida through... man, the website. Have you heard? Of oh, it? No, yeah, I haven't heard of it. I, I just know there's an ongoing internet meme that always says when something crazy happens, it always seems to happen in Florida. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> so Florida man, Florida yeah, man tell me about Florida is man. this great. I, I was turned on to it by uh, someone down at the Krav school. They said, yeah, yeah, like you put in your birthday and it'll tell you what crazy crime happened on your birthday, you know? So it's like <laughs> any day, you know, and, that's and so great. You go in there and it's the weirdest, dumbest, craziest things you've ever imagined that happened in reality. And and so right. it's like, OK, you know, you you can't make this stuff up. I mean, how do drugs get in prisons? You know, do you ever think that? um like like for example uh we talk about james bond and and you know those action movies we just had that head of uh what what was the thing that putin blew up the guy that putin blew oh up? uh va, va, the wagner, wagner group uh yeah. Pr prigozhin yeah. Pr i think that's his name prigozhin the the uh the the former right hand man of putin who turned his forces against Russia briefly last month, which we all kind of thought, oh, it's, that's going to be end of the end of that. And unfortunately, that does seem to be the case. Yeah. I mean, and they go, oh, well, missile shot him down. No, but um, maybe a, an explosive device was placed in the wing by somebody. So, you know, I, there's there's strange things that happen all the time. How many times have you thought, you know, teachers will never sexually molest a student? And then we have oh, yeah. all the time. You know, so again, yeah, I, yeah, I want to caution on getting real wild, but some of these basic things, like you said, okay, what if uh, somebody calls out that they're all clear and we do this, we're like, open the door, help, I'm injured, I'm injured, or, oh, it's okay, open the door, all clear, or I'm law enforcement, you know, right. we do that in our drill scenarios. And again, there's got to be some way to verify. So right. how do you do that and come up yeah. with the scenarios, practice them, test them, see how they work, see how they don't work. And that's what we're here to help you with. You know, we will actually yeah. come on site and run those drills. So, um, you know, check out your plans. Be happy to help you with that. In the meantime, check us out on all our social media, Facebook, Instagram, yeah. Twitter, or X. I guess we got to change that logo, Matt. X, YouTube, which you can I, find yeah. Um, yeah. And don't forget to check all our courses out on Udemy and Dollar Training Club. We uh, we just put up a new free guide for the COPS grant, which they're supposed to be announcing the winners from the previous uh, session coming up real mm -hmm. soon here. So we're excited about that. We submitted for some of our clients, and we believe yep. we're going to be bringing in um, several hundreds of thousands of dollars for them. So help uh, yeah. with their active shooter plans and all kinds of stuff. So if you want to get on the next round, uh, give us a call on that. And with that, we'll catch you on the next episode of the Risk Control Show. See you, folks.